All right, let's talk about the electroscope a bit more. So the electroscope is a commonly used apparatus in a physics laboratory, high school setting, uh, for folks to try to explore and experiment with various different signs of charge and magnitudes of charge. Electroscope is a tool that allows us to kind of visually um, compare bits of information. You're not going to get a quant concrete quali quantitative measurement off of electroscope. You're not going to know the exact amount of charge. You're just going to find relative strength there. And we're going to kind of talk about how uh, in a bit. But let's describe the electroscope a little bit more first. So we've got yourself a stand. Uh, the, the, this ring around it is usually some sort of conductor. You've got a uh, base here, the stand down here, which is typically some sort of insulator that it you know rests on and gets put on a laboratory bench or tabletop. And you've got yourself a, a stem that gets put, inserted through the center here. Uh, that stem is a conductor as well, and it's going to have an insulator surrounding it so there's no interaction between these two conductors. And then hanging from the stem, you have what we call two gold leaves. Now, not every electroscope has leaves. In fact, electroscopes that are used in my classroom don't. They have a little pivot thing that rocks up and down and swings. Um, it, it's the same concept, works exactly the same way, just not using gold leaves. The reason why gold leaves are used or were traditionally used, they have a very good conduct good conducting value to them and lightweight so they can uh, move apart easily when there's a force between them. Uh, what we do is we bring some sort of charge object near the electroscope, touch it to the electroscope, induce a charge into the electroscope, bring other charges near it. You make comparison points to see which charges are which value and which ones are greater than others. Uh, I'm going to go through a few very rudimentary explain or examples on the electroscope on the next slide. Uh, this is one of the ones I referred to earlier. I'm not going to go through this one in detail again or further at this point. I'm going to just use new examples on it. So let me get that loaded right up. Okay, so here's this glorious electroscope setup. I've got a little diagram here. I've got some charges populated on uh, the electroscope itself. I've got a rod here that's also got some charge populated on it. And I'm just going to kind of interact with the electroscope, show you and illustrate what is going on in terms of charge flow at a pretty rudimentary level, just so we can understand, again, that those basic principles that you're going to learn from the electroscope. So you've got, the I already populated a bunch of positive and negative charge on here. Uh, they're all the same quantity of positive and negative, so the whole thing's neutral. I just tossed in these charges just to remind everyone that these conductors, the metal itself, already has tons of positive and tons of negative charge within it. Remember, they're just, it's the equal amount, so it's neutral. Uh, and remind yourself, too, what is able to move around? Is it the positive charge that moves around, or is it the negative charge that moves around? Yeah, it's the negative charge. However, for illustrative purposes, I'm going to have to move the positive charges just so I can show an imbalance. Uh, so just keep that in mind. The positive doesn't flow. It's the negative that moves around. And uh, th this guy is uh, negatively charged, this rod. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it near the electroscope, and I'm not going to touch it yet in the beginning. And so now we have to first ask ourselves, okay, so we've got a negatively charged object near a neutral conductor. And um, what, what, what wants to happen here? So in terms of the rod, uh, the negative wants to become neutral, right? So in order for negative to become neutral, it either needs to gain positive charge or it needs to lose negative charge. And we already know that things can't gain positive charge. So this guy is going to have to lose this negative charge. And because it's a conductor here, these free roaming electrons, there's room for more charge. Uh, there's room for charge to move around. There, it's doable. And so this guy wants to lose negative, but of course we're not touching it, so it can't lose that negative. So as I bring it closer to it, what's going to end up happening is this conductor up here wants to become more positive, like. The positive wants to be near this negative rod. Or, better way of looking at it, the negative charges that are freely roaming here are like, whoa, negative, I don't want to be near there, let me get out of here. And it's going to kind of slide down this conductor. Uh, and again, for illustrative purposes, I'm just moving a few down here to show that there's still plenty of electrons up here. But what's happening now is I've got a deficit up here. I have less electrons up here than I had before. And so what that's going to do is, as we had said earlier in a very similar example that I did on this, um, this is going to put this whole top area as a deficit of charge. I'm going to write negative. I'm not going to write negative 2. I just want to show that's negative because in general, I, I didn't just move two charges down here. I moved a bunch. Again, symbolic purposes. However, down, or sorry, not negative. Uh -huh. It's lost two negative, right? So if it's lost two negative, this must become less negative. Or if we get less negative than neutral, that makes it positive. You know, that was an error at first. 
So we have a positive value up here. And of course, that means because more negative came down here, this whole area down here has more negative charge in it than it had before. So we have a negative area down here. And if you recall, this is polarization. We've polarized this uh, neutral object. Still neutral, my net Q is still zero, but we now have created poles, positive and a negative pole. Uh, up here, this doesn't mean a whole lot for us. Uh, this isn't what I'm observing. What I wanna now observe is recognize that since this area in general is negative, we're going to have a, as even distribution of negative throughout all of this metal. Which means if we look at it, this side has generally more negative to it. And this side does as well. Both this leaf and this leaf are negative. And what do those negative leaves want to do to each other? Yeah, they want to repel each other. So they're going to push each other out. And because the leaves are attached to a pivot point, it's going to rotate out. And they're going to feather out, and we're going to see an increased gap here, showing that there's some sort of repulsive force there. Great, we're going to take note of that. And then what we want to do is observe a little bit more. We want to say, okay, well, what happens when I increase the strength of this negative rod or bring this negative rod even closer? Let's do that. Let's bring it even closer. When I bring it even closer, I'm going to have uh, even more negative charge up here that's going to want to get away. There's a greater desire to leave. Uh, pause, by the way, that desire to push charge is a term that we're going to learn about in future uh, series called electric potential. It's great, very important to understand. I'm not going to use that term a whole lot right now. I'm just going to reference this idea of desire to leave. Uh, because this negative rod is near it, it wants to leave. So these guys are going to, again, try to take off. And they're going to start to line up more over here. And when that happens, we're going to have even larger negative differences here. This is going to be a greater negative, and this will be greater negative. And so that charge between them is going to go up, and that force is going to increase. These guys are going to get further apart, and it's going to fan even greater. And of course, if we wanted to try to take the opposite and move it further away, uh, there would be less of a propensity for these charges to exist down here, and they would work their way up, blah, 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 blah. And uh, it would still separate, but it wouldn't step separate as greatly. Okay? So let me uh, go through another example on it. 